Americans aren't known for their tiny waistlines and their healthy habits, but a very direct book is taking a stand in the fight against obesity. Die Fat or Get Tough, 101 Differences in Thinking Between Fat People and Fit People. It says anyone can be fit, it just takes mental toughness. Author Steve Siebold is here today to talk more about it. Steve, good to see you. Good to see you. Now, I understand that you used to be a professional athlete, right? Right. And you yourself were overweight at one time. Look at you. You did it. So right. I, are you here to say you can too? Yeah, absolutely. It's, it, this book is really about responsibility. It's about taking responsibility for your health. And if you're fat, getting fit and fixing it once and for all. So, well, well, you know, it sounds like a great plan, but how come we can't do it? It's mental toughness. This, this book is really a mental toughness book for dieters, and it's really about making a decision and having the mental toughness to stick to it. Well, why don't we want to hear that? Well, because it's not easy. It's, it's something we have to commit to, and it's easier to blame the government and the restaurants and the food companies and everyone else. Well, let's blame them a little bit because, come on, I mean, you know, those restaurant portions are out of control, right? It seems to be working for you. I don't I mean, eat out really, too much. <laughs> really, but, but you probably really watch your diet, I, I'm guessing. I do. I'll I, bet I'm you very do. careful. Every TV person I've worked with anywhere in the world says the same thing. Really? So it's working for people like you. Why is it not working for everyone else? Hmm. It's got to be self-discipline. It's the only answer. Hmm. Okay, now you've, you, in your book, you kind of go through um, the, the thought process that people who are fit have versus the thought process that people who are fat have. Right. Tell us some of the differences you found. I mean, you, you interviewed lots and lots of people for this, right? Yeah, we interviewed 500 fat people and 500 fit people. And we only say fat people just to be very direct because mental toughness is a very direct language. It's designed to just to grab people's attention and shock them into objective smack reality. Smack us in the face, right? Well, it's really what we need because what we're doing now doesn't work. You know, it's, it's not working. The obesity epidemic is out of control, especially in America, and it's not getting better. It's actually getting worse. Yet, again, people like yourself and other fit people are succeeding, so it can be done. So, like, one of the differences, for example, is that uh, we found that, that fat people eat for pleasure, which is what I did when I got fat, and they think about food in terms of pleasure, whereas fit people are always eating for fitness and, and health and energy and, and all the good things, abundance. So, so a fit person would look at a meal and say, okay, well, how can I pack the most amount of nutrients for my calories in this sure. meal? So I'm going to skip maybe the chips and go for the lean protein and the vegetables. Right? Exactly. They're very strategic about it. And, and when I sat and interviewed these people for a couple of years, I mean, I sat and ate meals with them and I thought, no wonder I was fat. I mean, these people sit there and go, I'll have the salmon and I'm going, I'll take the pizza, you know, and, and with everything, please. And, and you bring some chips over too as well. I'm thinking pleasure and they're thinking fitness. Well, I mean, I think a little bit of pleasure is good. I mean, you, you know, food, having food, eating is supposed to be an enjoyable experience, right? If you, you can do afford it, it with your family and you, you're supposed to enjoy the chatting, you know, talking, conversation time. Sure. Time to be together and it should be pleasurable. I mean, you, you want it to be pleasurable. Sure. Well, if you can afford it. Again, I, I think someone like you, other fit people, they can afford to do that. I can afford to do it now. It's, it's like saying a rich person in, in the worst recession in history shouldn't go out and buy an Aston Martin like you guys were talking about in one of the earlier segments. Well, if a rich person can afford a $200,000 car, God bless them, go buy it. But most of us can't, so we don't. It's a matter of can you afford the extra calories or not. And apparently most of this country cannot. No, nope, we can't. We're dying of obesity. I mean, this is a major situation. Talk about some of these other points uh, in the thinking process. Uh, fat people believe diets don't work. Fit people believe people don't work. Right. How many times have we been told diets don't work, diets don't work? Well, that's complete psychological delusion that's being programmed to the masses. I mean, diets work perfectly every single time. I studied over 200 world-class diets. There are lots of them out there. They all work perfectly every time. But if you don't stick to them, they don't work. It's like saying a budget doesn't work. Well, yeah, actually, a budget works. <laughs> logic, through logical reasoning, a budget works every time you use it. But if you don't use it, it doesn't work. See, we're not thinking. We're thinking through emotions instead of through logic, and that's our problem. Boy, this is some tough love. People may not want to hear it. People are dying from this stuff. Yeah. I mean, this is a serious thing. It really is. Tell us a little bit of your story, Steve. Um, w tell us where you were in your life when you decided you had to turn things around. So I give speeches for a living on mental toughness training for sale Fortune 500 sales teams, basically. And so I travel all over the world, and I'm in airports all the time and that whole thing. And I just stopped paying attention, like a lot of us do. And I kept looking in the mirror, and the, and the stomach is growing. And I'm thinking, I'm doing what everyone does. I'm deluding myself. And my doctor saying, oh, no, Steve, it's okay. You're fine. You, you look fine. And after a while, it just became ridiculous. I went to a friend's. What were you eating? 
Oh, everything. Just everything. I like mean, that, fast food, convenience yeah, fast food foods in the through airports. the airports. I mean, pizza and picking up hot dogs and all the stuff. And that just not paying attention to it. Then I went to a friend's wedding I hadn't seen in five years, and people are look, coming up to me and saying, oh, oh, hey, Steve, how you doing? And, I'm th you know, they don't want to be rude, and I'm thinking, they, they don't recognize because I'm so fat. You mean they were looking at your name tag first before they looked that at your That kind of a thing, yeah. It was, it was all a vanity play completely with me. I lost it because I was embarrassed. Wow. So how many years ago was that? That was eight years ago. Okay, what did you do? I, I, I created a program called FatLoser.com. It was an online program that I wrote for myself because that's what I do for companies. I write mental toughness programs. I took the program myself, and uh, and I lost the 40 pounds in 12 weeks. And uh, and then 12 I made a, weeks. 12 weeks. That yeah. is that came off fast, didn't it? It was 12 weeks of sticking 100% to the diet because that's one of the things we talk about in the book and the program is that it's 100% or it's nothing. There is no 99%. You know, it's like being faithful to your spouse. Try 99%. You know, not going to go over with the spouse real well, and it doesn't work in diets. But that's kind of what we do in America over and over. We go half-hearted. So I went full 12 weeks, lost the weight, never felt better. Now, did you also add in the exercise component to that? Yes, I've, the exercise. The I've meals. always exercised. You know, but but yeah, if you can ex go to your doctor, obviously, get a, make sure you're healthy enough to get be in a diet and exercise program, and then get on a good exercise program. But I mean, we're talking 40 minutes a day, nothing to three, four times a week. So really, it sounds like it's more critical the diet than the moderate exercise. I mean, you can go for a walk around the block and that would be probably sufficient as long as you're keeping to a good diet. No question. And, and it's been blown up with all these goofy TV shows where the, the people are exercising eight hours a day with world-class mm -hmm. trainers. That's ridiculous. That's all Hollywood. That's, it's most, any doctor will tell you it's, it's almost all about the diet and some about the exercise, all but right. not much. Well, um, your book is uh, certainly enlightening, and I'm sure it, it'll be a good read for people who, and we're not talking about the 1% that's, you know, that's got a medical problem. No. We're talking about the other 99%. Or a psychological right? disorder. There are right. people that have that as well, right. but most of us don't. Steve Siebold, the author of the book, is called Diet, Fat, or Get Tough, 101 Differences in the Thinking Between Fat People and Fit People. Glad to have you with us today. Thanks for having Thanks me. Thanks for coming.